My name is Alex Creamer, a musician based out of Binghamton, New York, and I'm from Montrose, Pennsylvania. Well, my whole life, music um, was really a big part of my life. My mom owns and operates a dance studio, so uh, right from you know the day I was born, I was exposed to an eclectic range of songs, and uh, I, I always just I really loved music. I, I'd write little parody songs when I was little, but um, I never really thought about it as a career. But the turning point was uh, my junior year in high school. I just wanted to do some community service, so I learned a few chords on guitar. I had one or two original songs and uh, played at a couple nursing homes and just kind of fell into this Valentine's Day gig at this local cafe in town. And I was so nervous. Um, I, I hated singing in front of people. And uh, after the first couple songs, the nerves kind of went away. I fell in love with that, that sacred exchange between a performer and the audience. And um, I just, I haven't stopped since. spoke to a lot of people that um, either had gone to school or hadn't, and um, I, I did hear from a lot of people, it depends on what aspect of the music industry you're interested in, and um, at the time it was strictly writing and performing, and they don't make a degree for that. There's no, you know, really performance degree. There's some writing courses, but, you know, I, I've always questioned how much um, you can really benefit from that, especially with my writing style, because it's very, like, private um, and a personal experience for me and it was just kind of my belief and my understanding that the best thing you could do is just go out there and get experience and um, meet other musicians and network and uh, I'd also um, I, I love to read biographies and autobiographies and so all these musicians that I looked up to of course none of them <laughs> none of them went to college You know, it's scary when you make that decision. I was I was very scared. I felt right, like I felt like it was the right thing to do, but nobody, there's no like step-by-step -step guide. Okay, here's how to become a professional musician. There's very little material on that because so much is just luck. And I don't think people realize how young you really are when you graduate high school. Like you're not an adult. You're not supposed to know exactly what you want to do with life. I was very lucky, you know, that I, that I did kind of have that realization that that's what I wanted to do and that I had enough people to support me so that I, I had the courage to pursue it full time. You know, I know a lot of people don't have it figured out and that can be scary, but you know, we're all just here to live. Like your, your career doesn't always define who you are, you know? I think artists, you know, 40, 50 years ago did kind of immerse themselves in the culture a, a bit more and, and kind of reflect um, what was going on politically. I, I think there's plenty of artists that still do that today. I just don't think they're in the spotlight. We live in a very politically charged world right now, and I think people want the music they listen to to be an escape from that, which I totally understand, and music should be enjoyable. Nina Simone said it's an artist's duty to reflect the times that they're living in, and I, I think that is really important. And, um, you know, honestly, the stuff you hear on the pop station, you know, quite frankly, it's kind of mindless and repetitive and unrelatable. I, I, I don't think it reflects a lifestyle that most people live. And I think music can be such a great voice for concerns that people have. And I think it can help bring us together as a culture, even when we can't come together politically or socially. And I think that's really important. I don't think it should always be an escape. I think it should be a, a road to kind of finding a common ground. Definitely. It's almost kind of nerve-wracking um, because like you have these people that aren't even looking to be full-time musicians. They're just like kind of doing it as a hobby. And I see these people and they have like, you know, 10 times as many followers as I do. And they're just like kind of doing it for fun or like goofing off. And they have like maybe a little gimmick or something that gives them an interesting twist. And it, it can be scary um, because you're like, well, this is all I've got, you know, <laughs> you know, and I don't have the money to do that. But um 
I, I think it's neat. You know, it's just tools, and it all depends on how you use them. They're not necessarily good or bad. It's just different than it used to be 40 years ago. And I think the people that are going to come out successful are the people that can use them to their advantage. With my own personal experience, it is really hard to get people to listen to you when you're nobody. I just noticed you're, you're fighting for attention a lot. Like um, Facebook, for example, you know, you're trying to get somebody to see a video that you posted. You're fighting with all this other stuff. You're not just fighting with other musicians' attention. You're you're fighting an algorithm. You're fighting, you know, videos of funny cats. You know, it's it's very weird to think about it like that, but. Um, it is, and then again, like you're, there's, I feel like a lot more musicians out there, at least it certainly feels like it, because they all have a voice, which is a good thing, but um, it can be kind of daunting, for sure. But at the same time, if it's something you embrace and, and work with, you can use it to your advantage, so you just, you have to use the tools that you're given and um, hope for the best. You know, I, I wish that everybody supported local music more and used these other outlets like um, you know SoundCloud and Bandcamp and stuff like that to listen to music that you know has a little bit more substance to it. I started dabbling in recording my own stuff just um, I, I came out with an album actually around a year ago this month. And, uh, you know, I did it in the studio. It was costly. Um, it was a great learning experience. I'm really happy I did it. But um, they were all older songs I'd written, you know, in high school. And so since then, I, I have so much new material. And I, I was really itching to, to be able to share it with people aside from at shows. And um, I just, I wasn't in a place financially where I could take on another album. So I thought I'll, I'll just record some real low quality stuff, maybe make a couple music videos. I found some free software. Um, if there's any musicians listening, uh, Studio One by PreSonus is really great. Uh, that's what I used. And um, it went really well and I, I had a lot of fun. And I was like, maybe I'll, I'll keep doing this. So I did a couple more songs and uh, you know, I, I've just, Gradually been picking, you know, some stuff. I, I borrowed a drum kit from somebody, borrowed a couple other instruments, um, ended up getting the, the full version of the software, which is still, you know, a fraction of the cost of doing an album somewhere else. And um, I've decided to do all the instrumentation, all the production, all the mixing, um, everything myself. And uh, it's a huge learning curve, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, Facebook is a good uh, place to find me. It's just Alex Creamer Music, and that's spelled just like Coffee Creamer. Also, my website, alexcreamer.com, uh, has a page you can contact me through. Um, I keep a list of my upcoming shows. So please like my page, and um, I, I don't post anything except music-related things, so you won't be bothered by anything other than like upcoming shows and maybe a video every once in a while. 